Have you ever wondered how much is too much information to share? Well, I have a feeling that on today's video, I'm going to be sharing way too much information. But a lot of people have asked me this question and I decided to go ahead and answer it in a video and actually that this would be the best way for me to introduce my new YouTube channel. But because it involves a whole lot of information, I haven't even told you what the question is yet, but it's gonna be a long video. So go make yourself a cup of coffee, get yourself a cup of tea or some hot chocolate, pull up a chair and we'll get right to it. But before I launch into the video, I just want to say, hi, my name is Panina Taylor. I wanna thank you for being here on my channel. Over the past 10 years, I have done videos on a variety of topics. Some were on Judaism, some were on prayer and faith, others were on motivational topics. See, I am an inspirational speaker, a master mindset coach and an author, and I've just kind of put some videos out there every once in a while. They've not been very regular, it's not been very consistent, and so actually that's why I have decided now I'm going to be starting another YouTube channel, but I'll tell you more about that at the end of this video. But for now, let's get into it. The big question, the one question that I get asked so much is why I became a vegan. Especially on Facebook and on Instagram, people see me post stuff about veganism. I just recently did a post about cooking for Passover as a vegan, and people ask me like, Panina, what happened? Why did you decide to become a vegan? So in my next talk, I'm going to talk more about the religious implications of that. But right now, what I'm going to be talking about is why I became a vegan, what's going on with me, and where I'm headed really, and hopefully you'll find some inspiration in what I have to share. So really, the, the truth is, is that my story, I have to back up. My story really has to start back when, about uh, 20 years ago or so, um, I was extremely overweight. I weighed 350 to 365 pounds. We're not actually sure because the scale that I was using at the doctor's office only went up to 350 pounds and I was heavier than his scale could measure me at. I was in a tremendous amount of pain. I was in my early to mid thirties. Yes, I did just give myself away as far as my age, but uh, I was in a tremendous amount of pain. Uh, in fact, I had premature onset of osteoarthritis. I kind of inherited that from my mom. And so between the osteoarthritis and the pain that I was in from my weight, I could barely walk. And in fact, so much so that I ended up using an electric wheelchair in order to get anywhere. When I would take my kids on field trips, when I would go to visit uh, historical sites, whenever we would do anything as a family, we would take trips, we would go anywhere, we had to tote my electric wheelchair along with us because I could not walk more than a few steps at a time. I was in a tremendous amount of pain and to be quite honest with you, I was really miserable and I was trying to figure out a way to fix the problem. I had tried many different diets. I went to Weight Watchers, I went to Overeaters Anonymous, I just tried pure calorie counting starvation. I figured if I was only eating a thousand calories a day, for sure I had to lose weight. There was no way that I could not not lose weight. And for months on end, I was going to sleep so hungry, I was crying myself to sleep. And at, I lost 30 pounds, which was amazing to me. I still had a lot more weight to lose, obviously. But after I lost about 30 pounds, I plateaued and I plateaued for quite some time, it was a couple of months. And I even went to the doctor and he said, that's impossible, you cannot be eating 1,000 calories a day and not be losing weight, it's just not possible. So I decided, okay, fine, I'll lower it to 800 calories a day. And so for the next three months or six months, I was starving myself at 800 calories a day. I did lose another 30 pounds. I ended up losing 60 pounds total but I was so miserable, it was not sustainable. I couldn't live that way. And I didn't realize it at the time, but I was probably killing myself. Well, 
as soon as I stopped paying attention to my calories and counting my calories, of course, I put on all of that weight plus more. And I just felt like there was no hope. I was going to be dead before I was 40 years old. And until that time, I was just going to be a big burden on my family and I was going to be absolutely miserable. I was absolutely miserable. So my husband had heard a radio program about gastric bypass surgery. And he came home to tell me about it because he was so wonderful. First of all, he never made me feel fat. He never made me feel ugly. He was the, he is the most amazing husband on the face of the planet. And he saw my struggles and he heard of this radio show about gastric bypass surgery. And he thought, well, maybe this is an answer. So he wanted to share it with me. And that night I went to bed crying for a different reason. Because from everything I had heard, gastric bypass surgery was almost guaranteed death sentence. Like, I thought that most people didn't survive it. And I felt like my husband would rather me dead than fat. But the next day, I decided to go online and to Google gastric bypass surgery. And I started looking at before and after pictures, and I was amazed, and I was inspired. And I thought this was finally the answer to me losing weight because clearly there was something wrong with me with my metabolism i couldn't lose the weight and so this was an option long story short i ended up having gastric bypass surgery and i ended up losing 200 pounds i got down to 165 pounds which i'm five foot eight with an extra large frame so that wasn't my ideal weight but it was fairly close right um And I lost 200 pounds and it was absolutely amazing. My life was, I had a whole new life, a life I had never experienced before. I mean, I think that I was down to the weight that I probably was in junior high school and I felt like a completely new person. It changed my life. It was amazing. And in fact, it was that weight loss that allowed me to start really blooming as a coach and as a speaker and stuff like that. Because unfortunately, people don't wanna listen to what somebody says if they're very large, which is a very unfortunate thing because I actually got angry at one point because I realized that there were people who would listen to me now who wouldn't have listened to me 200 pounds ago and the only difference was my size. It had absolutely nothing to do with the value of what I had to say or to teach. That's another soapbox I'm not going to get on now. But anyway, so I lost 200 pounds and then my family and I moved overseas. We moved to another country and I started to gain back the weight very, very slowly. But as I stopped paying attention to what I was putting in my mouth, because after I had had the gastric bypass surgery, which is, a con- which is considered a tool, it doesn't fix what's going on in your head, you know. It, it, it just means that the effort that you put into watching what you eat, it actually accomplishes what it is that you're trying to do. So I was really, really good with my diet for quite some time. But as time went on and I started to get used to my new thinner body, I started to get lazy. I started to get less disciplined and I started to slowly put the weight back on. I had gained back about 40 pounds. And as this was shortly before the marriage of my my last child to get married i have four children my last child to get married i don't even remember how many years ago it was now he's gonna kill me when he sees this video i want to say that it was about seven years ago and uh, i had topped back out at i had topped out at 205 pounds and i was not happy about it i saw pictures of myself when i was speaking and i was like no this is not okay but more than that i was starting to have achy joints again i was starting to feel the weight of the weight that I was carrying. And so I decided this this is not okay. Now at this point, I probably stretched out my stomach. It's not the size that it was when I had the gastric bypass surgery. I was capable of eating a lot more, like as much as any normal person can eat. And, uh, and so I was, and I was eating junk food and I discovered, you know, when you first have the gastric bypass surgery, there are certain foods that make you feel really, really sick if you eat them, mostly high fat, high sugar foods. And so I wasn't eating them, but now I discovered that I could. And so I just went all out and just started eating whatever I felt like eating. Now, obviously there was something else going on in my head that I was compensating for. And that is a big part of the coaching that I do when I'm working with somebody who wants to lose weight. 
I'm not going to get into that in this video because the question, the big question is why did I become a vegan, right? So you just have to understand kind of the history. So here I am seven years ago, I topped out at 205 pounds and I said, you know, I didn't go through the gastric bypass surgery. I didn't mutilate my body for no reason. This is not okay. I have to take control over this. But now, obviously, I don't have the same advantages that I had right after I had the gastric bypass surgery because now my body's gotten used to eating foods that I'm not supposed to eat, and I can eat much larger amounts than I could right after the surgery. So now I'm just going to have to depend on my own willpower to make this happen. I did a lot of research, which anybody who knows me knows that when I'm teaching courses, when I'm giving over information in my coaching, when I talk about mindset and or imposter syndrome or different things like that, all of my students know that I do a tremendous amount of research before I give over any information. And I do that in my personal life as well. It's part of who I am. I love to learn. They call it being autodidactic. I love, love, love to learn. So I go online, I take a course in neurobiology or whatever. So now here I am, I'm at 205 pounds. I've got to lose weight. Gastric bypass surgery clearly is not an option at this point. You know, I mean, I had already had it. So what was I going to do? So I started doing some research about weight loss and I came across something called the ketogenic diet. The ketogenic diet is a high fat, moderate protein, very low carb diet where you train your body to burn fat for fuel instead of carbohydrates for fuel. Most of the time when we eat food, our body is our body is designed to burn carbohydrates. That's how it's created. That's the fuel source it uses. It converts carbohydrates into sugars, into fuel that feeds all of the cells in our body and our brain especially needs carbohydrates in order to function correctly, optimally. So what happens is when we eat carbohydrates and we eat fat, our body is designed to burn the carbohydrates and to save the fat for basically times of famine. Fat is a last resort. It's hard for our body to burn it. And we are from ancient times created to store fat to use as a last resort, it's like a bank account, savings account, so that we will stay alive and won't starve to death. And we will only start to starve to death once we've burned through all of the fat stores that we have in our body. Now, back in ancient times, people were extremely active. They would burn off the carbohydrates very, very quickly. And then they had those fat stores to dip into when they needed to. If they had a winter where there wasn't a lot of food available, in the winter they would use their fat stores for energy. It's highly inefficient, but when your body begins to burn your fat stores, obviously that's when you'll lose weight or when you don't gain weight, certainly. But it's not the best fuel for your brain, especially. It is the backup so that you don't die when you're starving. But what the ketogenic diet does is it puts you into ketosis. Ketosis is the state basically of being in starvation and forcing your body to burn fat. If you're not giving it enough carbs, you're forcing your body to burn fat instead as fuel. It sounds really good, but if you think about it, that's not how your body was designed to work. That is a last ditch effort in order to keep you alive. It's not ideal, it's an act of desperation. And a lot of things go out of kilter when that happens, but they don't tell you that. When you're watching the videos about the ketogenic diet, when you're reading the articles about the ketogenic diet, all they tell you is that you're going to eat in a way that's going to train your body to burn your fat so you'll lose weight. And you know what? It works it does work, at least in the short term. So I went on this ketogenic diet and I lost 50 pounds. Now I'd only gained back 35. I got down to just under 150 pounds, which was the lowest that I had been definitely in my adult life. But even since I was, like I said, like I think in junior high school, it was lower even that I had gotten after I had had my gastric bypass surgery. And I was thrilled with the way that I looked. I was absolutely thrilled with the weight loss. My knees stopped hurting 
and I felt really, really good about myself. I liked the way that I looked. But then all of a sudden, one day, I started to get these strange rashes on my legs. And at the same time, I started to have severe pain in my hands. I had already had some because I have arthritis in my wrists. I had had some pain in my hands, but even when I took a break and I was being careful and I was giving my hands a rest, the pain was not only not going away, it was getting more intense and more constant. And we had just moved house. So I thought maybe it was because I was packing and unpacking. So I gave myself a week of like basically not using my hands for anything except getting dressed and eating. And the pain was not going away. And on top of that, I started getting really, really tired. And I was taking naps in the middle of the day and going to bed early and getting up late. And I was like, you know, each of these things is explainable on its own, right? Like the rash on my leg, maybe I came in contact with a plant or something, you know, like poison ivy. My hands are hurting, but I do already have arthritis. Maybe it's because of the packing and unpacking because we just moved house. Maybe I'm tired also from moving house and, you know, who knows what. But I went to my doctor and I said to her, look, I have these very bizarre symptoms and I'm starting to wonder if together they paint a different picture. So she ran some blood tests and lo and behold, I had a positive ANA, which is a marker for lupus, which is an auto, uh, autoimmune disease. And I also had uh, rheumatoid factors and other f- inflammatory indicators. And I ended up going to a rheumatologist and being diagnosed with rheumatoid and psoriatic arthritis, which are both autoimmune diseases, as well as lupus. So the doctor put me on a medication that it turned out I was allergic to, but it also didn't really do what we needed it to do. It wasn't very effective. And I started to research the next levels of medications that they give for autoimmune diseases. And I discovered that the next level medications are like chemotherapy medications and they have pretty bad possible side effects. Now, of course, not everybody experiences these side effects and for some people the threat uh, or the risk of these side effects outweighs the positive benefits that the medicine brings to how they're feeling. You know, they're no longer exhausted, they're no longer in pain and all of the other things that, that go along with these autoimmune diseases. But during my research, I came across uh, a video by a man named Clint Pattison. And he tells a story. In fact, he has a TED Talk. Uh, I will put a link to Clint's TED Talk in the comments below. So if you're interested in watching that. But basically, the long and the short of it is that he had crippling rheumatoid arthritis, terrible, terrible inflammation in his knees. He could barely walk. One day he got food poisoning. And after being sick for three days and completely emptying his stomach out, he discovered that the inflammation in his legs had gone down and he was able to walk much more easily. Being a scientist, he said, well, okay, how can I replicate these results without having to starve myself to death? And so he started with an extreme elimination diet, having nothing but like green smoothies and leafy greens for like two weeks. And then he slowly added back foods one at a time to discover which foods triggered more inflammation and which ones didn't. And then he found the right combination for him. And as he started to heal and he shared about the results of his experiment, people started to come to him for help to get rid of not just rheumatoid arthritis, but other forms of rheumatological or autoimmune diseases. And he's had a tremendous amount of success in helping people treat their autoimmune diseases by diet. So I bought his book and I started reading through it and I said, wait a minute, there is no way on earth that I can follow this diet. I can tell you right now, I have a lot of sensory issues. I'm a very picky eater. I can't drink green smoothies because of the texture. There is no way that I can do this. And I started to get really upset because I was in despair. I was like, I can't do this. This is the cure. What am I going to do? So I decided to go ahead and read the whole book anyway. And the program talks about starting with this extreme kind of cleanse and then adding foods on 
when you get to the end of the book, you see basically, okay, if none of these foods affect me negatively, this is the diet that he suggests. So I decided to do the program backwards, so to speak. I decided to start by trying his most permissive form of his diet and seeing if I got any results from that and then I would back off of things if it didn't work. So when I looked at the diet at its biggest form, I discovered that it was basically a vegan, gluten-free, low oil, no processed sugars, no refined sugars diet. He also says no caffeine. I said, well, I'll still have a little bit of caffeine, but I'm going to go on this diet. Now, I wasn't as careful with the oil and the sugars, but I went completely off any animal proteins at all, including eggs and cheese, no meats whatsoever, no fish, and also no gluten. Well, I had a harder time with the gluten than I did with the animal proteins, but I don't even know if it was two weeks. Two weeks of doing this program, I went from like symptoms that we would say are like eight to nine, down to like a five. Like I had a significant drop in pain. I had a significant increase in energy and my rashes went away. Now, I wasn't so good with the gluten because I found it a harder challenge and I did cheat every once in a while and I allowed myself to have something that had gluten in it. But one day I decided, okay, you know what? I'm going to be really, really strict for a week I'm going to have absolutely no gluten and see what happens. And what's interesting is my symptoms went from like five to two when I was completely off all animal proteins and all gluten. And basically, I just continued with this and I put all three, two, three diseases into remission. I went back to the rheumatologist and I had my blood work done and everything was in the normal range. My ANA test was negative. My you know, inflammation markers and all of that stuff were all where they're supposed to be. I put the diseases into remission through my diet, but I did not engage in what is called a whole foods plant-based diet, okay? Whole foods plant-based diet is like, it's a vegan diet, but where your focus and your emphasis is on eating whole foods, vegetables, starches, not processed foods. If you're gonna choose a sugar, you're going to choose it in either by eating fruit or by choosing a form of sweetener that is closer to the original. It's as unprocessed as possible, okay? Different people have different definitions of that, but a whole food plant-based diet differs from being a vegan because vegan simply defines not eating animal products. And of course, there are um, vegans for ethical reasons who also will not use any animal products. They don't use any wool. They don't wear any leather, things like that. I'm not going to even get into a discussion on that. But I was what I call a junk food vegan because I felt very deprived. You can tell already, like I have a lot of emotional attachment to eating food. And I'm also a picky eater, which doesn't help. I have very, very narrow tastes and I have a, uh, an idea as to why I'm conditioned that way, but that's not for this conversation really. So I was eating vegan. My, my, I was feeling much better. My, all of my autoimmune diseases were in remission, but the weight started to come on. I wasn't careful with the oils. I wasn't careful with the sugars. And I wasn't focusing on unprocessed foods. I was eating a lot of veggie burgers and french fries, which is just like, you know, the way I had been eating before only with meat. I discovered vegan cheeses. So I was making like vegan lasagna and using a lot of the fake vegan meats. And not that they're not good. And they're especially good for transition. But that was my entire diet. I have very few real vegetables, a lot of vegan processed foods and you know very little fiber a lot of fat and so the weight just came on and on and on and on and on and it just kept going up and up and up and up and i actually topped out at 222 pounds now that's still 140 pounds less than when i had my gastric bypass surgery 
But I was now not only hating the way I looked, I hated the way I felt. I felt miserable. I felt like I was carrying around this really big, heavy backpack on my back, you know? And like everything made me out of breath. And I just really, would, my knees were hurting. Every joint was hurting. And I said, okay, something has got to give here. This is not okay. So I started watching more videos about how you can lose weight as a vegan because that was not working for me. And I came across two YouTubers. One calls herself Healthy Vegan Mama. Her name's Tia. And the other one is High Carb Hannah. And they talk about how they had a shift in their ability to lose weight once they really started to focus on foods that had lower calorie density and that's probably for another video, uh, but basically whole foods, plant-based diet with a really high focus on non-starchy vegetables. Obviously, you can still have some of the, the things that give you satisfaction because I don't know about you, but a giant bowl of salad, it may fill my stomach, but it does not satisfy me. So there's this whole principle around the idea of calorie density that allows you to have to cut your calories while still being very full and being satisfied by the way that you combine your vegetables and your more processed foods. So the reason in a nutshell that I became a vegan, that I you know went off all animal proteins was to try to deal with the autoimmune disease and it worked, but I did have the weight gain. So now I have transitioned to more of a whole foods plant-based diet. I'm still a work in progress. Uh, I'm still working on getting the oils down. I still use some oils, especially naturally fatty foods like tahina and avocado and nuts and things like that. But I'm pulling away from using just refined oils, which add a tremendous amount of calories to your food consumption, tremendous amount of fat and focusing on eating large amounts of non-starchy vegetables along with the other foods that I eat. And I have lost 22 pounds. So I made this video to answer the question and to invite you to join me on this journey. Now on my regular YouTube channel where I talk mostly about faith and inspirational type topics and stuff like that, I'm gonna still keep that for coaching and for spiritual and inspirational things. And I have started a new channel that I'm calling Lose the Weights, Life Unburdened. Now it sounds like it's gonna be a channel all about losing weight. And actually it's not going to be at all. Yes, this first video, which is going to be posted on both channels, this is my first video on my uh, Lose the Weights channel. But losing physical weight as in body weight, as in fat, is the last thing on the list of topics to talk, to talk about. I will share about my journey, but I'm talking about other types of weights as well. You know, the image that I get in my mind is, I remember seeing a documentary one time about marathon runners, or even, I guess, short distance runners who train with heavy weights on their uh, ankles, some even wearing backpacks and other things like that. And they, they train with these weights so that when they go to actually run the race and they're not wearing the, the weights that are kind of holding them down, they fly. Because they were so used to it being so hard to run. And once they let go of all of that weight, now they run so easily. and that kind of connected in my mind with this idea. I, after I had lost all my weight, I put on a 50 pound backpack and tried to walk around for a little while to remind myself of how hard physically life had been when I was carrying around all that extra weight. Now, obviously the best thing would have been to put on a 200 pound backpack, except I couldn't have done it. And I thought to myself, I can't do that. I can't carry 200 pounds on my back, but I was. I was carrying 200 pounds on my back and actually a whole lot more than that, which I'm not sharing in this video, but I was carrying around a lot of other weight as well. 
And I learned through the coaching work that I do, both the work that I did with other coaches and through the work that I do with people that I work with, that when you can get rid of those weights, you can not only run fast, you can soar. And so those are the types of things that I'm going to be sharing with you on the new YouTube channel, Lose the Weights. Well, I think that I've already spoken for long enough today, so I'm going to go ahead and close this video. If you feel like you learned something today, if you feel like you were inspired by something today, please be sure to hit the thumbs up button. It tells me that you enjoyed it, that you were inspired by it, that you want me to do more videos like this one, and it also kind of helps my videos get seen by other people. If you feel like the things that I teach are something that you want to continue to hear, go ahead and subscribe not only to this channel, but subscribe to Lose the Weights. I'm going to put the link in the comment section below, or if I can figure out how to do it, maybe I'll put it in one of those boxes here or here or here, anyway. Uh, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of my future videos. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Panina, and until the next time, remember, you got this.